Community Kids is on. Tell your brother, tell your sister, Community Kids is on. Yeah. Okay. Did you tell your brother? Tell your sister? Are they there? Are they there? Okay. Now, what we're going to do now is warm up. Everybody stand up, spread out, and you tell everybody we're going to run around the house. Are you ready to run around the house? We're going to do it for 15 seconds. Are you ready? Say, I'm ready. Go ahead and say, I'm ready. Okay, 15 seconds and run. seconds but that was so fun yeah I love community kids do you love community kids me too okay let's just jump right into it you guys ready to do the memorization first all right let's go hi everyone this month's memory verse is Isaiah 26 3 you will keep in perfect peace all who trust in you all whose thoughts are fixed on you. Now let's learn some motions to help you remember. For you will keep, you're gonna put your hands on your hips and stomp your feet. In perfect peace, you're gonna put your peace signs up and move them back and forth. All who trust in you, you're gonna bring your hands in to a clap. All whose thoughts, point to your temple, are fixed, point to your temple again, on you and point to the heavens. And for Isaiah 26, 3, open your Bibles. Now let's do that all together. You will keep in perfect peace all who trust in you, all whose thoughts are fixed on you. Isaiah 26, 3. Now you try it. You will keep in perfect peace all who trust in you, whose minds are fixed. On you. Isaiah Great job, everyone. Make sure you're practicing that awesome verse, and we'll see you next time. Miss Alyssa and all the kids, great job. I love that verse. You know, when we put our mind on Jesus, he gives us peace. So cool. Jesus is cool. Yeah. Now, let's jump into the lesson. Are you ready to jump into the lesson? Let's go. Miss Megan, take it away. Good morning, guys. Today, we're going to have our lesson on wisdom. But before we talk about wisdom, we're gonna talk about a man named Solomon, who was known as the wisest man in all of the land. Let me give you a little backstory on him. You can read about it for yourself in 1 Kings chapter 3, verses 1 through 15. Don't worry, I'm not gonna read the entire thing to you, but I have it kind of summarized so you get the idea of where we're going. So Solomon was actually King David's son. And when King David got old, he appointed his son Solomon to take over as King of Israel. Now, if you remember from some of our other talks about David, David loved God and he was a man after God's heart, own heart. He made some mistakes, but he really tried his best to follow God and he was a very successful king. So now Solomon is coming in and taking over and he's young and inexperienced. He's only about 20. He doesn't really know what he's doing. He loves God too, but like some of us do when we're inexperienced and are lacking in knowledge and wisdom, he got caught up in some idol worship, which did not please God. So one night in a dream, God came to him and asked, ask for what you want. And Solomon actually had an interesting request. He didn't say, make me rich, make me powerful. No, he actually asked for an understanding heart, discernment, and wisdom. This made God really happy. So of course he answered that, but he also gave Solomon lots of victories and made him rich as well. Solomon was so wise that he was known as the wisest king on earth, and many came to him for advice. He was so wise, we have three books in the Bible that he wrote, Song of Solomon, Ecclesiastes, and the book of Proverbs. 
Okay, I, I know I said we were gonna talk about wisdom, but I needed to give you that backstory. But before we talk about wisdom, let me do a quick wardrobe change. All right, so you can see now I'm in a graduation gown and I have my hat. I put the hat on, but my hair is so big it doesn't stay on. So you get the idea though. I'm in my graduation attire. When you graduate from something, it means you're moving from one step of life to another. So when you're little, you might graduate preschool because you have enough knowledge to go to kindergarten. When you graduate from high school, it means you have enough knowledge to make it in the real world, or so we hope. And if you graduate college, it means that you have enough knowledge about a certain subject or topic that you can get a job in that field. Now, I'm talking about knowledge, and I said we were gonna talk about wisdom, but oftentimes these things go hand in hand, but not always. Knowledge is knowing facts, knowing information. Wisdom is the ability to make good choices. So let me give you an example of my own life. I graduated college with a degree in kinesiology. I'm a health and phys ed teacher, so I have a lot of knowledge of how to keep my body healthy, my mind healthy, and just live a very healthy lifestyle, right? I have knowledge of that. However, it takes wisdom to apply that knowledge. So because I try to make wise choices to keep myself healthy, I try to eat healthy foods, get enough sleep, drink water, and keep my body moving. That's using wisdom. But because we have free will, we can also make bad choices. So I could choose to watch Netflix all night long, not get enough sleep, and eat ice cream for every meal. That wouldn't be a wise choice. So do you see how they're a little different? I have knowledge, but then I have to exercise wisdom to make good choices with that knowledge. So once we have our wisdom then, it will help us see the world more clearly. I have another example here. I have these glasses. They are not mine. I actually don't wear glasses. But, and I actually am not gonna keep these on. They kind of make me feel like I'm gonna vomit. But people that wear glasses need them so that they can see the world more clearly. If they don't have glasses, they can't see the world clearly and they might walk out into traffic. So that wouldn't be a good thing, right? And that's how wisdom is. When we have wisdom in our life, we can make better decisions. We can live more godly lives. So you're probably wondering, well, how do I get this wisdom? How do I get the wisdom of God? Well, I'm glad you asked. It's pretty simple. God just wants us to ask for it and he will give it to us. The first thing he gives us is really simple, the Bible. It is filled with wisdom. Look in here if you need an answer. You'll find it for any situation that arises in your life. The second way he gives us wisdom is he gives us the Holy Spirit. And the Holy Spirit's nudgings can help us make right choices so that we can live a godly life. So now that we know what wisdom is and how we get wisdom, it's important to use that wisdom. God calls us to live good lives. And not that we won't ever mess up, we will. We absolutely will mess up. But then we repent and try not to make that mistake again and God will forgive us. But when we have wisdom, it's our job to obey. So when we know what is right, we need to choose that. We need to use wisdom. The last thing I wanted to talk to you guys about is the book of Proverbs. Like I mentioned a little bit ago, Solomon wrote three different books in the Bible, and Proverbs is filled with so much wisdom. So I wanna challenge you guys this week to find that book in the Bible and read parts of it. And I'm gonna leave you with a verse that I like. It's actually in Proverbs chapter one, verse seven. A little tidbit of wisdom here, guys. If you really want to gain knowledge, you must begin by having respect for the Lord, but the foolish people hate wisdom and instruction. Let that sink in, guys. If you really wanna gain knowledge, you have to start with respecting God. So God is where your wisdom comes from. And if you choose not to live that way, you're considered a foolish person. And I don't know about you, but I don't wanna be considered foolish. So let's pray before I let you go. Dear Jesus, thank you. Thank you for giving us wisdom. Thank you for giving us the Bible to find wisdom. And thank you for always providing wisdom whenever we ask. God, help us to seek you this week in all the decisions we have, God. Help us to rely on you when we face things we don't understand, God. Help us to rely on the wisdom that you give us to get through. In your name I pray, amen. Miss Megan, wow! I love that lesson, you know, 
Jesus is just amazing, isn't he? When we put our thoughts and our hearts into him, it's just amazing. Thank you, Jesus, for what you do for us. And Miss Megan, awesome lesson. Now, let's jump right into the craft because I get so excited because the craft is so fun. Are you guys ready to do the craft with us? Yeah, let's do it. Miss Mandy, take it away. Hi, everyone. So today we are talking about wisdom and the theme was position for wisdom. And um, in the lesson, it talks about Solomon and he asked the Lord for something. And out of all the things that he asks for, he asked for wisdom. And so the Lord was proud of him and he grants him so much more. So we're actually gonna do a craft that's going to kind of signify all those things. And when you think about a dream, we often think about clouds and it's kind of uh, depicts that dream or that bubble that you would see. So this is why we're doing this shape. And then the first word is wisdom because that's what Solomon asked for. But then we find out when we uh, read 1 Kings 3 that there's much more. So we're gonna see the next one is he grants him riches. And then the next one is honor. And the last one is long life. So we're gonna create these colorful clouds with our construction paper. So we're going to create this. I'll put this aside. All right, so we have construction paper, and it doesn't matter what colors you have, but we're going to go ahead and use this. So you have one, two, three, four, four sheets, okay? And you're going to grab your first sheet, and you're going to make a cloud. This one's going to be the biggest cloud, okay? They're each going to get smaller. So you're just going to take your pencil, and you're just going to make some wavy lines moving around your paper. I don't know if you can see that real well, but then what you're gonna do is you're gonna cut that out with your scissors, and you're just making the shape of a cloud. So you're just gonna in and out, moving around your paper. All right, so there we have our biggest one. This one's gonna be your wisdom. Okay, so we're gonna still use this here, okay? It's gonna be kind of a template to show that we need to go smaller, because our next cloud is actually smaller. So we're just gonna use that, kind of just to show us the next size. So I'm just gonna go on the inside here and make our smaller cloud, okay? And then you're gonna do the same thing, you're gonna cut that out. around and making those soft rounded edges. Okay, so then there we go, there's our next shape. Okay, keep this one, pick your next one, this will be the next cloud. Okay, again, we're gonna make it smaller. So I'm just gonna move on the inside. One more to cut out. This is our last one, so this will be the smallest. Take this as my, my guide, and I'm gonna go again on the inside, not tracing, just moving a little bit on the inside of that. So that makes it smaller. Remember, this doesn't have to be perfect or round or, or just uh, just right because this is organic, so we can make it all shapes. All right, that's our smallest one. And then what you're going to do is you're going to write the words on here. So as you can see here, our first word is wisdom. So you're going to write that on your cloud. And you have your box. You can use whatever color you want. Next word we have riches. So you're gonna get your next biggest cloud. And we have 
of Honor. What's your next biggest club? And then the last one is Long Life. You're going to get your smallest cloud for that one. And you're going to write that word on it, the words on there. Okay. Okay, and then the next step is you're going to take a little one. Starting with your smallest first. Put that down on your paper. I'm going to tape the top part of that. Your next biggest cloud, which is honor. And you're going to lay that on top of that one. Tape at the top. Next one, riches. Tape at the top. Last one is wisdom, and you're going to do the same thing. You're going to tape it at the top, and then you have this craft where you can show your friends or family, and you can talk about your Bible lesson that you learned about by using the flaps. Okay. Here we go, guys. Happy creating. Miss Mandy, thanks for leading us in the craft. That was so fun! I enjoy that every week. Community kids, do you like to craft every week? I do. Yes! Now remember, if you want to worship with us this week, go ahead and click the link in the description. Click it. Remember, any day, any time, you can worship with us. Just click the link. Cool? Cool. And remember, most importantly, Jesus loves you. We love you. And we'll see you next week, community kids.